Hello everybody and welcome into this One Nation weather forecast for America. You can see the storms making their way out of the Dakotas into the Midwest and then off towards the Ohio Valley and East Coast. Yes, we will see these storms diving on down with cold fronts that are swirling from this system up in Canada. You can just see that consistent spin really circling around and producing new systems in this forecast for America. That is going to be exactly what I'm covering along with the tropical weather update. So let's go ahead and get into that as well as that drought that's getting going in the Southwest. That's another topic of concern. It's July 9th, 2023, the evening and we again we're talking about the week ahead forecast and the tropical outlook. Now here's your Monday weather forecast. Cold front pushing off the east coast force here with a stationary boundary in the south. Not uncommon for this time of the year for them to stall, which means the Gulf Coast states, portions of the east coast will be getting wet with some showers and storms, unusually wet into portions of the northeast. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And then we also have these severe weather zones into portions of the plains. I know it sounds like deja vu of the last couple months really there. And then we also have the potential for some severe weather to get going into portions of Wisconsin as well as into the upper peninsula, upper peninsula of Michigan as a stationary boundary sits over Montana. Look at this heat, 90s building all the, all the way up into portions of Montana, the northern tier of the country, except for in places like North Dakota and northern Minnesota, getting in on these 80s and 90s, as you can see most of the country in on those. The northeast also cool, as well as some zones in the Pacific Northwest, but most of the country seeing 80, 90 degree readings for your Monday. That will not necessarily last for long, though. Here's that flood risk. I do want to give a br briefing on that in the northeast for us here. Eastern New York, all the way on over to Maine, but especially Vermont, New Hampshire, as well as Massachusetts, we have that level three flood threat. So let's play that out, at least for your Monday morning radar. You can see these heavier showers and storms pushing their way on through. This, the HRRR model, notice it, it shows that heaviest rain getting going in eastern New York and western Vermont, which is where it spins out those heaviest totals. But look at these. Some of these yellow areas are where we could see four to six inches of rain. Some of these darkest spots, I think, in anywhere in portions of New, northeast New York, western Massachusetts, as well as Vermont. In New Hampshire, we could see one or two spots in each of those states pick up seven to nine inches of rain. So we need, really need to keep a very close watch on that. But even towards New York City, places like Trenton, New Jersey, will at least get a few inches of rain. Certainly something that could produce some isolated flooding, especially on those urban area streets. Now here's a look at the Monday severe weather outlook again. Not much activity getting going in the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley for us, because that cold front will have dried that area out. But you can see the East Coast at least getting in on some storms. Some of them could be severe along the Gulf Coast, the Carolina Coast as well. But look where the level two zones are again southern central plains and then up into portions of the up of michigan and wisconsin Wisconsin force there, and these zones have the potential for scattering, damaging wind gusts to 70 miles per hour, scattered large hail events up to 2 inches in diameter in these yellow zones primarily, and a few tornadoes in that plain zone for you here, which stretches from Nebraska down to the panhandle of Texas. The storm energy, it will be pretty abundant. We'll see moderate levels of that at least pushing further north. Now, the HRRR model doesn't really want to spin out much out of these storms, but notice how the FV3 high-res is definitely spinning out some storms all the way from the upper peninsula of Michigan again back towards Kansas. They will include the panhandle of Texas, though that is not pictured for you here, you get the point. It's been pretty much rinse repeat with more of these storms. And then as we make our way into our Tuesday, the level two shield includes Iowa, Missouri, portions of Kansas, as well as Nebraska, with a level one risk along the Gulf Coast states for us. Again, flooding is also possible in those storms that get going there. The Northeast still getting some wraparound moisture with that low pressure system that has developed there. We'll be definitely be keeping a very close watch on that for more flooding potential some areas in the south and central tier of the country getting some more rain. Notice we've got more comfortable temperatures in the northern tier of the country, still hot and dry in the southwest, still very warm in many portions of the southeastern tier of the country. So let's look at the rainfall trends this week. This is the GFS model, what I was showing at the top of this video. You can see some of these storms pushing on down into the Midwest and then making their way off towards the East Coast. So let's let's watch this day by day starting here. So here we go into our Tuesday. There come the storms through the Dakotas, upper Midwest and the Midwest on Wednesday into the Ohio Valley as we go into our Thursday. Northeast continuing to get some activity as well as we go into our weekend. But really the whole the whole purpose of you sh me showing you this is that this is not exact. It's just showing you the storm track will mainly be making its way across the north t northern tier of the country and the eastern tier of the country. So the northeastern tier is going to be the best bet for some of your storms this week. We will also see the pop-up storms in the southeast. Notice these areas of moisture pushing eastward according to the European model. There's one. There's a second one pushing through as we go into our Thursday. Here comes another one diving down into the Dakotas on our Thursday night and into our Friday. And then here comes yet another another piece of energy as we go Friday night and into our Saturday, working its way along the northern tier. So the whole point of me showing you these things is just to show you how repetitive these areas of moisture that could spark off storms will be. We'll see warm air develop out ahead of these individual areas of cool air, but really there's going to be a steady stream of cool air that's going to be entering the Dakotas. 
Minnesota as well as Iowa. Notice how hot it's going to be in the west coast of the country compared to average. It is going to be searing heat there and very dry as well. So here's your severe certainty on Wednesday. I've got low end severe certainty from the Dakotas, Minnesota on down to places like Arkansas and Kentucky, but that level two zone is Illinois. Missouri, and then also into portions of Kansas for us here. As we go into our Thursday, that zone shifts into the Ohio Valley. And then as we go into our Friday, I think that first zone shifts off towards the East Coast and Mid-Atlantic with a new one developing into portions of Missouri, Illinois, and Kansas. Again, this is just preliminary. A level two out of five for me now. Here's a look at the, oops, here's a look at the tropical development outlook. It is a 30% chance of development. Now, now, why there is not an X on here, you might wonder. It is because the entity has not yet developed as of your Sunday afternoon. But when it does, it will be looking like it's going to be in this area, the north North Central Atlantic for us here, and both models do agree that we could potentially begin to see a depression or storm by the time we go towards our Wednesday, but the good news with these model trends is that they have it pushing on off towards the north and really eventually just breaking apart in these cooler waters, not really making its way towards land. It would generally be subtropical. As you can see, here's the GFS bringing it spinning, maybe turning even into a weak hurricane, but look at how this has it really just swirling around in the open waters, not really able to get itself together too much, getting dragged along by other systems moving across the really just getting sheared apart in general. So the headlines recap. Stormy pattern ahead with Dakotas all the way to the East Coast, a low-pressure system in Canada. Again, talked about it in the previous video as well. We'll be producing the cold fronts that will move northwest to southeast, bringing scattered severe storms, hot and dry in the west and southwest, with searing heat and intensifying drought conditions remaining in the forecast in those zones. And then cool spots will be the north-central zones, where we'll have that steady stream of fronts, leaving most of the northern plains and upper midwest with 5 to 15 degree temperature departures at times. And then tropical storm Don may form by late week, so we'll keep an eye on that. Subscribe, hit the like button, and here are the credits, everyone.